slow PC or fast PC, it doesn't really matter. What you want is you want your Blender scene to be optimized and running as fast as possible. So in this video, I'm gonna give you some really valuable tips on how to do that. Let's go. Now the first tip is gonna be really simple and many people don't think about it, but it's one of the most powerful tips you can learn for hard surface or any modeling really in Blender. Now, I'm gonna be using add-ons for it, but if you don't use add-ons or you're just new to Blender, then I would highly recommend grabbing our course, which is called the Hard Surface Accelerator, which will teach you all the foundations and basics that you need in order to get good at Blender and also to have fun modeling and this course has an insanely strong curriculum based on a feedback from well over 100,000 students and six years of us using blender every single day for projects work etc now this course will teach you the basics the menu the tools but also the entire process the workflow from a cube to a final render and much more like for example there is a whole section on principles of design which will teach you how to sit down grab a cube and design something cool on your own, which is something that a lot of people struggle with. So if you want to learn Blender efficiently and effectively, this is the best course to get. In two weeks, spending just 30 minutes per day, you can achieve some amazing results. You can see the results on a screen from our students. And if you don't believe us, again, go to our page, look at the testimonial page, or simply hop on our Discord where we have 8,000 people, ask around and they will tell you. So go ahead, grab the course. The link is in the video description and enjoy. So now let me show you what I mean by modifiers. Now if I cut this cube here and I'm going to be using add-ons, hard ops and box cutter and by the way we have a course for this one as well. It's a brand new ultimate guide to hard ops and box cutter 2.0 which is brilliant but you know before you're gonna learn how to run, learn how to walk. So if you're learning Blender and you're beginning your journey with Blender, start with the hard surface accelerator because you need foundations in place in order to, you know, get better at some more complex and advanced stuff. But anyway, if I'm gonna have a model here and I'm gonna slice it with a lot of Boolean. So if I go here to modifiers, you can see I got three Boolean modifiers life on my mesh which means they're not applied it's it's no it's not a physical geometry these are boolean modifiers which means i can still adjust them move them do whatever you know i want with them right now if i'm going to on top of this run a bevel it's going to dramatically increase the impact on performance and the reason for that is because you're simply gonna add a lot of geometry if you look here on the at the uh, scene statistics you see we got 410 faces and every time i add one cut like this is gonna you know multiply like rabbits right but if i remove the bevel right you see what happens we went from 820 to 40 faces and the reason for that very simple because bevel you know is very dense and it's going to add a lot of geometry on top of a mesh right so what do we do first of all when you arrive at a certain shape and you're happy with the stage of your model let's say i'm really happy with these bullions i want to keep them i'm not going to be adjusting them I'm going to apply them. So I'm going to apply mirrors, booleans, arrays, solidifications I don't need. Because if you multiply this cube by 100, that's going to be close to a million polygons. Do you see what I mean? It's multiplying really quickly. So when you have a mesh with like hundreds and hundreds of booleans and bevels, no wonder your blender is going to be slowing down. So you want to simply go and apply them. I'm going to do it with hard ops by smart applying and Bob Jankel, easy peasy, drop and easy. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, you can also get rid of the bevel because, you know, again, bevel still, you're going to create a lot of, uh, a lot of faces. We still have 826 faces. And if I nuke that, it's going to be a bit better, uh, but then we don't have a bevel. So what's the solution? Well, it's really simple. You can create a fake bevel uh, especially when it's like a small highlight bevel, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to cycles. You have to be in cycles, so you have to enable cycles. And I'm going to be using our add-on called Material Works, which is an amazing plugin for uh, texturing. It's just a one-click solution to add anything, including wear and tear, you know, and all that, you know, look how simple that is, right? I can put here some, you know, um, some rust on it, whatever I want. But anyway, uh, my point is that we don't have a bevel here, right? So oh, let me just remove this so you can see that. We don't have a bevel here, right? So what you want to do is you want to add a bevel shader and that's going to only work in cycles. So I can click here 
and then increase the resolution of samples to 16 and you got a beautiful bevel running on the cube and you know uh, it's easy uh, to add very light and you don't have geometry because you only have 34 faces so much lower impact you know it's going to be a much lower impact on your performance another thing you can do with this bevel shader which is really important the side tip i give you is when you have a dense mesh let's go to you know grab the uh, this uh, sphere let's apply uh, subdivision now i got a really dense sphere if i went went ahead and ran a, a boolean on this one and add a bevel on top of it you see that my bevel is going to break because you know geometry of the bevel is going to be overlapping with the geometry of the of the mesh on the on the sphere so i would need to do a lot of cleaning you could do it using add-ons like a mesh machine etc but you know it's still a lot of work so what's the solution very simple again you just add the bevel shader because if i click that you know i'm done right i got a bevel running on all the edges and i don't have to clean anything because the mesh looks clean so you know, that's an additional tip for you. And if you want to be even more efficient, you want to run some incremental saves when you work in. So you can save a mesh with booleans and bevels and all the modifiers, save that, and then apply everything and move on. And if you want to bring that old mesh in, you can copy paste it from another Blender because you can run multiple versions of Blender on your PC or a video on that. So go ahead and watch it. Next tip is going to be about cycles, okay? If you are struggling, let's say rendering stuff, right? And, you know, rendering takes a lot of time. You probably have a wrong cycle settings first of all what you want to do is you want to change here from cpu compute to gpu compute that's really important because your gpu is going to be always faster or in 99 case you know percent of cases faster than your cpu so you want to switch that and you want to make sure that the settings here are also correct and by the way i have a whole video showing you how to set up your ui and also the same um, similar content is in our course that i mentioned in the beginning a bit more in depth obviously but uh you know we show you everything that you need to know about how to set up your ui properly to make it the most efficient ui for hard surface but what you want to do is you want to go to system and either enable optics or cuda but you want to enable your card and do not enable your CPU because it's going to slow things down. Next, on the sampling, you want to change this madness here because when you download Blender initially, I don't remember exactly what's the number here, but it's pretty high. You want to drop it to 128 samples in viewport and 300 in render. This, I think, is like 4096 in here. It's insanity. You don't need that many, you need 300, that's it. Just keep the denoise on and you're good to go. And it's going to render much quicker, much faster, and it's not going to choke your machine on your PC. You're not gonna to have to wait there for seven hours to, you know, for render to finish. It's gonna be just in minutes or seconds. Another thing you can do to speed up your viewport, especially when you're working with heavy scenes, is this option here. Also under a cycle, it's called Simplify. This one is brilliant. So what it will do, it will reduce the, for example, the, the, the number of subdivisions in a viewport or, you know, child particles, which I don't really use, but this one is important, texture limit size. That's really important. So watch this. If I'm going to, you know, grab this uh, face here and um, just run it like that, subdivide it slightly, and then my subdivision control six or control five, right? And I got a uh, subdivision on it, on it running in, let's say six levels, right? It's really crazy, right? So if I have a massive object with a lot of bullions, bevels, you know, and this kind of a dense subdivision, I guarantee you things gonna slow the hell down. So you don't want that, right? So what you wanna do is you wanna go to the simplify um, tab here. And you want to change the number of max subdivisions that you see in a viewport to one and it's going to revert back to this kind of a you know faceted object let's just shade it smooth there we go but when you render this so when i'm going to apply a camera right and i'm going to render this let me just switch here to 135 there we go and uh, by the way i'm using machine tools to set it up it's a fantastic add-on. It's the only add-on we use in the Accelerator course because it's so useful, so robust, and so bloody cheap. It's like $5 or something. Anyway, um, so what you want to do is you want to lower the max subdivisions here and then you want to render. And you see that since the max subdivisions in the render are set to 6, which is maximum, you will see that we're going to have a very clean, uh, clean render here You know, after the render is finished. So if you compare... You know yeah there we go if you compare uh, this to this you can see clearly there is a massive difference this one is much more smooth than this right so 
that's how you want to work with um, the the simplification and also textures now these textures are 4k right you can switch it between 1 and, and 4k if you want to because we have both options that come with the add-on but if you're going to start adding stuff here like wear and turn whatever you know this this starts stacking up and and you're going to see a lot of you know your memory going to get used quite heavily so if i'm going to go here to and disable this you'll see that 8.8 .8 gigs out of 24 and if i'm going to go here and limit the texture to like let's say 226 you'll see that my vram is going to drop to eventually to 7.1 and this is going to be much more significant if you have more mats more stuff in the scene because you know one mat is uh, going to be uh, 7.1 uh, gigs but you know if i duplicate this multiple times the impact of ram of your usage is not going to really change or if i you know add another mat here it's going to be probably very similar right there you go it's not really changing so it's going to creep up very slowly but eventually it's going to creep up especially when you have decals and other stuff in your scene so this could creep up very quickly so this is the best way to drop it. Another way to drop this would be to stop working in a, uh, you know, in a render view, but work in the 3D viewport. So for example, when I render something, and you know my VRAM usage is quite high, I'm gonna I'm gonna go here to the 3D viewport, and look, my VRAM uh, usage went down to 3.7, which is almost half. So that's a you know another way to go about it. Another way of improving performance of Blender is going to be cleaning your scene and what i mean by that is very simple let's say i have these mods here and i wanted to get rid of this uh, edge wire, right i want to get rid of it and then i wanted to make sure that all these elements follow the same uh, texture here so i'm going to copy that mod to all of these right but you see if i go to mods i will i will still see all these other mods here in the scene so i will see uh, all the all the metals but also i will see the braided cable what you can do you can go to uh, unused data here and you can purge it so you can remove all the mods that you're not using and the usage of these mods gonna go down so that's another you know way of kind of cleaning your blender scene and if you trust me if you have like a lot of um, you know, let's say you, you're modeling and then you're texturing and you're going to be adding multiple mats and then you're going to be removing them. You're going to end up with a whole list of mats at 4K, which are going to inflate the hell out of your scene. So you want to purge them and it's going to also remove other junk that you don't need. Now, another way of purging stuff would be with hard ups and box cutter. Now, let me show you what I mean by that. So let's say you are working. Let me just clean the scene here so you have a better understanding what I'm talking about, right? So... Let's say that we're working on, you know, in here and I got a cube and I'm going to cut it with a, with a boolean, right? And then I'm going to cut one more here and one more on top. And let's say I wanted to remove one of these booleans. So let's say I'm going to cut it here and I'm going to say, well, I don't really need this boolean. I'm going to nuke it, right? So if I wanted to remove this boolean, I'll go here and find it, right? This one, and I'm going to remove it. Now there's a problem with this. We removed the boolean modifier, but you did not remove the boolean shape. What I mean by that, this shape, which was added last, which is this one, right, is still here in a scene. And imagine if that was, you know, times 200 or times 300. You remove the bevel, uh, you remove the boolean, but you keep the cutter. You're inflating the number of verts in your scene, right? So especially when you got a complicated cutters, custom cutters, cutters with bevels, etc., it's going to inflate the number of stuff in your scene. So what you want to do, you want to nuke that. Now, it's really difficult to find cutters that are not being used because it's very tedious. But if you're using hard ups and box cutter, you can do it with one click. Because what I can do is go to Q menu, go to settings and under manage, I can hold alt and I can remove, you see, it got nuked, all the unused booleans, right? It's really easy. So it's going to remove all the cutters I don't use on that mesh and any mesh that was selected. So this is really useful and very powerful way of cleaning your scene. Another way of lowering the impact of performance would be to, instead of copying your objects, creating instances of this object. So for example, I'll give you, give you an example, right? Uh, so for example, if I wanted to, let's say, grab this model and this model was textured okay so let's say grab some you know put some texture on it and let's say uh well, let's let's put this one okay 
And if I wanted to create a you know duplicate of this object, and let's say this was really complicated with decals, you know, let, let, let's just go ahead and put some decals, okay? So I'm gonna put some decal on it, let's say I don't know this one, right? And I'm gonna scale it, put it over here, right? Doesn't matter what it is really. Uh, we can just you know project it and then maybe we can add some other decals. And by the way, our decals now work perfectly with a decal machine. Um, I mean the decal machine added decals work perfectly with our add-on and at the moment we are actually working on our own solution for adding decals to the mesh so you don't have to go outside but at the moment you can just you know run match on it and it's going to match perfectly with the mat which is impossible uh, using native uh, decal machine you do need to use our add-on for this but my point here is that um I have you know all these textures and if I duplicated this it's going to you know duplicate all these textures it's going to duplicate all these textures in the scene and they're not small they're quite you know they're quite high resolution textures so what's the solution what you want to do is you want to put everything in one collection right so we're going to put this into collection here so we got the decals and the cube everything is one collection and you want to create an instance of it right go here to collections and collection and it's going to create an instance of this collection so this is not really a mesh it's an instance so if i do anything with this mesh here right so let's say i'm going to grab this edge and bevel it you see it's going to affect the other mesh the same with decals if i remove one they're going to disappear here because it's an instance right but this is going to have a much lower impact on your performance also it's going to make it much easier to move things around because if you have a very complicated object let's say 700,000 you know faces plus decals plus textures plus everything if you duplicate the whole thing it's just gonna crush your scene right you will need a crazy pc for this to handle it so that's another way of improving performance of blender i'll give you two more tips okay so let's say you're working in blender and you are adding a cube and you're cutting it etc and in native blender you you know there is no cavity right you're gonna see this and it's really difficult to see which is why you want to run a bevel right to see the highlights on the edges but bevel is gonna add additional faces and geometry to the scene right so they're gonna inflate the scene so what you want to do instead you want to run a cavity on on your mesh so you want to go here and enable cavity you can also do it with hard ops alt v and enable cavity you see you're gonna be seeing these fake highlights on your mesh, right? And it's really, really cool. And that's what I would recommend to use when you model. But there's another feature, and I think by default, it used to be enabled in Blender. I'm not sure if that's the case anymore, but it was shadows, this thing. This is absolutely awful. I have a video on that. It's a very old video in which I showed that this is actually slower. So your, your preview in 3D viewport, which is here, not a render preview, this one, is going to be slower if the scene is complicated with shadows than in render view. So render view is going to be faster with all the lights, shadows, textures, everything, than this. This algorithm of the shadows, unless they improved it, is bloody awful. Not to mention it's actually confusing to look at. So what I would suggest is simply disabling it and you can also do it again here. There you go, shadows, that's the one. So I just disabled that rubbish because it's awful. So if you have this enabled, disable it, your performance is going to skyrocket, especially when you have a more complicated scene, more stuff in the scene, and you know, it's also much cleaner and easier to see. So these would be my tips for improving performance in Blender. I hope it's gonna help you out. And like I said, again, if you are interested in learning Blender, hard surface modeling properly then grab our course the hard surface accelerator which currently exceeded way over 4,000 students who enrolled and love it again you can read the testimonials on our page or just hop on our discord public discord and ask people there's close to 8,000 people over there so you know they're gonna tell you what they think and you can get an unbiased opinion over there now like i said the curriculum of this course is very tight is very well structured and well thought out it's meant to teach you how to 
to have fun in Blender without, you know, being overwhelmed with some unnecessary tools and menus, because if you look at Blender UI, it's just super confusing. It's just a lot of stuff you don't really need, never gonna be using. And in fact, modeling in Blender is super fun and easy if you know how to approach it. So if you wanna have fun in Blender, you wanna learn hard surface modeling as efficiently as possible, this is the best way to do it. So go ahead, click the link in the video description, grab the course and enjoy. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.